Welcome, everyone, and please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem, performed today by Robin Schwartz, Assistant Professor of Communication. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave? Thank you. Please take your seats at this time, and we would also like to ask you to silence your cell phones.
Welcome colleagues, friends, and special guests to the Oregon Institute of Technology's investiture ceremony for our seventh president, Dr. Nagi G. Naganathan. My name is Mark Newpert, and I am chair of Oregon Tech's Humanities and Social Sciences Department and a professor of anthropology, and I will be our master of ceremonies today. On behalf of Oregon Tech, we are very excited to share this great day and formal ceremony with you and are honored by the respect you demonstrate by sharing this day with us. Throughout this ceremony, there will be recognitions from several different speakers thanking our friends, colleagues, and guests. To open those recognitions, I want to respect, respectfully acknowledge the Klamath tribes, comprised of the Klamath, Modoc, and Yahuskin people, who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. We are grateful to you for sharing your home with us, and we look forward to continuing to strengthen our relationship with you and welcoming and supporting students of the Klamath tribes at Oregon Tech. Thank you to the tribal leaders, including Chairman Don Gentry, who planned on being here today, but due to his role in leading a family memorial service, was unable to be here. And a special thank you to, well, as well to our elected officials and government officials for being with us today. This includes Senator Bessie Johnson, State Representative Werner Reschke, Oregon Secretary of State Dennis Richardson, Klamath County Commissioners Donnie Boyd and Derek DeGroote, Klamath Falls Mayor Westfall, Klamath Falls City Manager Nathan Trepesky, and 173rd Fighter Wing Commander of Kingsley Field, Colonel Jeff Smith. Thank you for all, all for joining us today. For those of you who are not in academia, you may wonder about feral, formal ceremonies such as today's with arcane names like investiture and commencement. Both of these ceremonies are rites of passage, ritual ceremonies that mark the moment when the status, role, and expectations of the initiate are forever changed. We in higher education are used to the ritual of commencement which celebrates the transition from student to graduate, a moment full of optimism and expectation as our new alumni shed the role of student and go forth to pursue their futures. In the case of investiture, we as an institution led in this endeavor by our board of trustees mark the point at which in the first year of a presidency passes from newness to stability, from a trial period to an endorsement of tenured leadership. Just as in commencement, where we use the symbol of moving the tassel from the right to the left to signify the movement of student to graduate, today's ceremony includes the investing of the chain of office to Dr. Nagy, signifying the board's and the university's endorsement of his authority as president, as well as our expectations of that role. As an anthropologist, I see all of us here today as a community, a village of sorts, gathered in common values to witness and support Dr. Nagy's moment of transition. We are investing in him, our hopes for the future, and our trust in him to provide wise leadership. Today, we observe these common tenets and look to Dr. Nagy to embody our values and to meet our common expectations, ethics, and aspirations. This gathering today is all about community, about our shared purpose and commitment to do the best we can for our students and our mission while standing behind our invested president. So welcome to this historic day and thank you for spending time in this mutual celebration. It is now my pleasure to introduce David Thamert, who is president of Oregon Tech's Faculty Senate and associate professor of civil engineering, who will provide formal greetings from the university's leadership groups. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Thamert. Thank you, Dr. Newbert, for that introduction. 
We're certainly very pleased and excited to have all of you with us today. I bring you sincere greetings on behalf of our university's formal entities, our faculty senate, administrative council and their chair, Josie Hudspeth, the associated students of Oregon Institute of Technology, their Klamath Falls president, Faith Lee, and their Portland Metro president, Peggy Hawkins, and then Oregon Tech's Alumni Association and their board president, Ralph Santiago. These entities work very hard to advance the work of the university and the success of all of our students. Please join me in recognizing their leadership and dedication to Oregon Tech's mission. For those guests who are not familiar with Oregon Tech's history, I would like to provide just a brief summary of how we traversed from those early days to where we are today. A major change in higher education occurred after World War II in this country, with the doors of colleges and universities opening wide to accept veterans aided by the GI Bill. In Klamath Falls, there was a need to provide retraining and support to these former service members. And in 1947, the institution which eventually grew into Oregon Tech was born. We are the youngest of Oregon's seven public universities, with Portland State opening their doors just a year before us. Over the intervening years, Oregon Tech's programs grew and changed to meet the stated needs of industry in the state and region, moving from offering only associate's degrees to creating robust bachelor's programs in the 1960s to offering master's degrees in the 1990s. We also changed our name in the 1960s from Oregon Technical Institute, or OTI, to the Oregon Institute of Technology, or Oregon Tech. In 1964, the campus that you are on today was purpose-built on a geothermal site, beginning our long history with renewable energy solutions. I guess you could say we were an early adopter this campus has been heated by ge geothermal steam since the campus opened. Even our sidewalks are heated in the winter to, to melt the snow and make passage safe for our community. Over the years, we established the Geo Heat Center on campus, built two geothermal power plants, established the Oregon Renewable Eng Energy Center, and you may have seen the nine acres of solar panels on the hillside above campus. As we look to the future, our goal is to run the campus on 100% renewable power, and we are well on our way to reaching that goal. Over the past 30 years, Oregon Tech has also expanded its footprint across the state and region. In the late 1980s, we opened our first permanent teaching facilities in the Portland metro area at the Harmony Road campus in Clackamas, and in the intervening years had other sites in the metro area in the heart of the Silicon Forest in outer Portland and Hillsboro. In 2012, those delivery sites were consolidated into what is now known as our Portland Metro Campus, located in Wilsonville, growing over 40% just since that facility opened its doors. Our relationship with industry also grew in the early 2000s when we began a relationship with Boeing in the Puget Sound area to offer mechanical and manufacturing engineering technology degrees right at their location. We are very pleased today to welcome executives from Boeing to help celebrate our shared history together. We also offer dental hygiene bachelor's degrees in La Grande for several years in collaboration with Eastern Oregon University and Moda Health. And today continue that dental hygiene program in collaboration with Chemeketa Community College in Salem. During those 70 years of growth and innovation, Oregon Tech had six presidents prior to Dr. Naganathan, who joined us in 2017 as our seventh president. Their names and tenure are in your program, but I would like us to honor them today by reading their names aloud for their commitment to serving the mission of the university. Please hold your applause to the end. Winston Purvine, Kenneth Light, Larry Blake, Lawrence Wolf, who honors us here today with his presence. Martha Ann Dow, 
who we sadly lost to cancer during her presidency. Christopher Maples, and now Nagi G. Naganathan. Thank you for your thanks to our past presidents and their families for their part in building the legacy of this great university. It is my pleasure now to introduce a special friend and colleague of Dr. Nagy's with whom he has spent many years in shared scholarship. Dr. Stephen LeBlanc, Interim Vice Provost of Student Success at the University of Toledo, as well as Professor of Chemical Engineering. Dr. LeBlanc has held many important positions at the University of Toledo for many years, including Professor of Chemical Engineering, Executive Associate Dean of the College of Engineering, Interim Dean of Engineering, and now as Interim Vi Vice Provost for Student Success. Dr. LeBlanc earned his first degree in chemical engineering from the University of Toledo and his master's and PhD in chemical engineering from the University of Michigan. He is a fellow of the American Institute of Chemical Engineers and an internationally acclaimed author of multiple books in the areas of creative problem solving, control systems, and reaction engineering, which are widely adopted in many universities. Please join me now in welcoming Dr. LeBlanc, who will make special remarks about his years together with Dr. Nagy. Good morning. I bring you greetings from Toledo, Ohio and the University of Toledo. Dr. Naganathan's home prior to coming to the Oregon Institute of Technology. When I was asked to participate in this ceremony, I was truly thrilled because more than a colleague or friend, Nagi is the closest thing I have to a brother. I'm deeply honored to be able to introduce Dr. Naganathan on the occasion of his investiture as the seventh president of OIT. Nagi and I have been friends and colleagues for more than 30 years. So I feel I have a unique perspective to be able to introduce him today. As I wrestled with what to tell you today, I thought about his academic career. Professors always like to know what, that their administrators are accomplished academics and scholars and have spent time in the trenches, so to speak. Dr. Naganathan's academic accomplishments are many. He has his bachelor's degree from the National Institute of Teruchiropali his master's degree from Clarkson University, and his PhD from Oklahoma State University, all in mechanical engineering. An interesting aside, he's now covered all states that start with O. <laughs> Oklahoma, Oregon, and Ohio. His faculty and professional accomplishments alone would have made for quite a successful career by any measure. He is one of an elite few faculty members to have received both the University of Toledo Outstanding Teaching Award, as well as the University of Toledo Outstanding Research Award. He is an ASME fellow, and indeed a prolific researcher, with more than 100 publications, a patent, and over $6 million in external funding. Some vehicle manufacturers still use a program they refer to as Nagi Code to design vehicle powertrains. You may not be aware, but Nagi is an excellent computer programmer. And for those of you who remember Fortran, he has one of the few remaining Fortran compilers on his computer. <laughs> and I've seen him use it to manipulate Excel spreadsheets to process financial information or enrollment data. He probably doesn't have time for that now, but I can assure you he would still enjoy it. Nagi was not satisfied with his successful faculty career as an accomplished teacher and researcher because he had many more talents to share with the university as an administrator. His administrative career was just as prolific. He was the inaugural chair of the Department of Mechanical, Industrial, and Manufacturing Engineering, and he was the longest serving dean in the history of the College of Engineering. His contributions were significant, including leading the college in a period of unparalleled enrollment growth, 11 consecutive years of increase, averaging over 4% per year, breaking 4,000 students total in the college for the first time in the fall of 2016, the last fall he was in Toledo. 
Our College of Engineering owes him a debt of gratitude. He took a fledgling mandatory co-op program that had really just begun and converted it into a signature program for our college with over 19,000 placements at more than 2,400 employer sites in 44 states and 42 foreign countries. Additionally, during his time as dean, he was author of well over 100 or well over 10,000 Excel pivot tables. He'll be remembered by his colleagues as an energetic, forward-looking dean who made numerous important contributions to the College of Engineering and UT for the benefit of all students. He was also an outstanding fundraiser as dean. He generated philanthropic support exceeding $16 million that produced the Roy and Marsha Arms Engineering Leadership Institute and the construction of the Nitschke Technology Commercialization Complex, as well as the Thomas and Elizabeth Brady Engineering Innovation Center. A tireless advocate, he also raised the college's visibility on the national front. The National Visiting Board and Corporate Partners programs that he established are two examples of those efforts. His ability to form connections in academia, business, and government led to creative solutions to the benefit of all three. And if all that wasn't enough, he served as one year, he served for one year as UT's interim president, an experience which had a significant impact on him and made him realize that another presidency was the next logical step in his stellar career. So Nagi, as you prepare to be officially invested as the seventh president of OIT, there may be some trepidation for the unknown, but I'm certain there's also excitement for the new opportunities at hand. And I'm sure you're comfortable in your ability to be a transformative force as you have been so many other times in your career. But knowing you as well as I do, one thing I'm certain that's causing you no, no small amount of concern is having to disconnect from your single source network of suppliers that you had developed in Toledo. For those of us who know Nagi well, we know that he's very loyal in his purchasing habits. His shirts and shoes were always from JCPenney's, always white shirts, always eight and a half triple E Florsheim shoes. His restaurant choices were limited to a few favorites and the list goes on. My wife asked Nagi if he didn't get bored with the same shoes all the time. And he came back with a line that was classic Nagi. Jokingly, he said he's a different kind of engineer. He doesn't look at his shoes. <laughs> Self-deprecating, humble, kind, and polite. These are the characteristics that define the man. Let me assure you that you have selected a very hardworking president. You'd be hard pressed to find one who works more hours in a week. As a matter of fact, he was sending me emails regarding this ceremony the other night after midnight your time which by the way was after three o'clock in the morning, my time. <laughs> Some of my favorite and most, perhaps most traumatic memories of working with Nagi were our annual state of the college addresses. They had preparation sort of like what's going on as preparation for the investiture. It seemed each year we would have to outdo the year before. We went from a couple of homemade videos the first year to multimedia extravaganzas in later years it included such notable experiences as 3D videos and glasses for the entire audience and flying dual drones into a filled auditorium while thermally scanning the audience and displaying the results on the screen, which Nagi wanted to practice a hundred times so that we didn't accidentally decapitate someone in the crowd. <laughs> One year on an airplane, he read an article about an Ohio company that distributed special glass used in teleprompters. I can see you've got some nice teleprompters here today. Upon his arrival back in Toledo, the seed was planted for constructing our own homemade teleprompter for use in the state of the college addresses for a fraction of the price of, one of, of a pre-manufactured one. While it did make for a very polished presentation, none of us had ever used one before. So this added hours to the practice time. Ideas like this were typically um, late arrivals in the process, because as, like, as Nagi likes to say, it takes a rapidly approaching deadline for the adrenaline and the ideas to flow. <laughs> All night storyboarding and scripts for presentations with up to 30 different versions, nothing was ever left to chance. 
everything was carefully planned out so that even if the final product might have looked effortless, it certainly wasn't. I'm sure your co-workers have already experienced that. That's just who Nagi is. Nagi credits a colleague, Stephen Kramer, for attracting him to Toledo, beginning a long friendship that continues to this day. Steve sent me a note to read at Nagi's retirement party in Toledo because he was unable to attend. Uh, the note read in part, even in 1986, I knew you'd be a great, ex great success at UT, but I must confess I didn't realize then how enormously you would be admired and yes, loved here in Toledo. It was an absolute pleasure sharing teaching, research, and service with you over these years. What struck me about that were the words admired and loved. That about sums it up. The outpouring of well wishes when you announced Nagi as the new president of Oregon Tech, you know, Oregon Tech was truly overwhelming. There's a certain symmetry to him being the seventh president of OIT. And as engineers, we all enjoy symmetry. While at the University of Toledo, he served under seven different presidents and 12 different provosts. That's a lot of bosses to work with. How did he handle all those changes? I believe that a quote from Maya Angelou can help answer this. She said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Nagi has always been a humble leader, the consummate professional, and a gracious host. Nagi makes people feel good. He's touched innumerable lives throughout his career and has been a catalyst for helping others reach their true potential. We didn't follow him because we had to. We followed him because we wanted to, because of what he inspired within us. We never felt like we were working for Nagi, but with him, all pulling toward a common goal of raising up the university and our College of Engineering. He inspired us to walk with a quiet swagger which is one of his favorite quotes from Jim Leland, a former manager of the Detroit Tigers. On a personal note, I enjoyed each of those 31 years I was able to share with you, Nagi, in Toledo. You've truly become a member of our family over the years, and you are missed. And I'm proud to have been your colleague. On behalf of my Toledo colleagues, I'll finish up with one additional paraphrased quote from Mr. Spock in Star Trek II Wrath of Khan. Nagi, we have been, and always shall be, your friends. Good luck and Godspeed, Dr. Nagi. Thank you, Dr. LeBlanc, for those wonderful remarks. It is now my pleasure to introduce the chair of Oregon Tech's Board of Trustees, Dr. Lisa Graham. Dr. Graham is a chemical engineer who is CEO of Alchemy Innovation, Inc., and who became Oregon Tech's inaugural board chair in 2014. She has led the board through a period of many accomplishments for the university over the last three and a half years, from setting up the board structure to purchasing the OMIC facility to hiring President Naganathan. Please join me in welcoming Board Chairman Graham, who will lead the formal investiture of Dr. Nagi. Thank you, Dr. Newport, for that introduction. Thank you, all of you, for being here today. I want to welcome colleagues and friends, faculty, staff, and students to this very special event that we're celebrating today. Besides others who have been recognized earlier, I would also like to greet one of our best neighbors in Klamath Falls, Nancy Went, and the entire Went family. Nancy, thank you for accepting the invitation to be our honorary chair of Dr. Naganathan's investiture. You and your family have been Oregon Tech's longtime dear friends and supporters, and we appreciate your engagement and your presence today. So thank you.
and a huge thanks to our entire investiture committee who have been working for months, literally months, <laughs> to make sure that today would be a wonderful and memorable day, not only for Dr. Naganathan, but for our entire Oregon Tech community. You probably just want a nap or maybe a hug at this point. So thank you to the investiture committee for your hard work and for making today so special for everyone. It is also my pleasure to recognize Oregon Tech's fourth president, Dr. Lawrence Wolf, who served our institution from 1991 to 1998, bringing our university through some pretty turbulent times in the state of Oregon for public higher education. And during his tenure, elevating Oregon Tech with, among other things, the offering of our first master's degrees. So thank you, Dr. Wolf, for your dedicated service and for joining us here today. It's a great honor, frankly, to stand up here on behalf of Oregon Tech's board with you today. It's a chance for us to celebrate our university, and we hold this university so fondly in our hearts and minds, and this chance to recognize our new leader, Dr. Nagi Naganathan. We also very much appreciate the attendance of several members of Dr. Nagi's family. Many of you are in the audience today, including his wife, Kasturi, and daughter Sonia and several other relatives. So thank you for the distance you've all traveled. <laughs> we thank all of you who've come near and far to be with us today. So I would refer each of you to Dr. Nagi's bio in the Taze program. So especially following on the previous speaker, um, we've got a real good sense, I believe, of, of some of the wonderful qualities and experience that Dr. Nagi brings. I won't reiterate those impressive details of his professional scholarship and his experience as Dean of Engineering at the University of Toledo. Instead, I want to briefly note what the Board of Trustees has seen accomplished over the last year as Dr. Nagi has led us on a journey together to take Oregon Tech to its next level of excellence. As you will see in a few minutes, when we share a short video there were many qualities that the board recognized in Dr. Nagi that made us confident that he could lead this institution, serve the needs of our wonderful students, work well with our talented faculty and staff, and reach out to Oregon Tech's many stakeholders, all of whom are important connection points in ensuring a strong, high quality, po quality polytechnic education. There are many definitions of leadership. But the profile that resonates with Oregon Tech's board is this. The greatest leaders are driven by the vision of what can be and are not stilted, stunted, or sidetracked by what has always been done in the past. A leader like Dr. Nagi animates his vision, bringing it to life for the rest of us and breaking out of the bonds that may have held back progress or innovation. In science, we sometimes call that paradigm smashing. I like that term, smashing. At Oregon Tech, we call that the Dr. Nagi factor. Just in the last year, we have seen great expansion in Oregon Tech's engagement in many of our communities, from industry members to donors to legislators to the local communities here in Klamath Falls and our Portland Metro stakeholders and to our other colleges and universities. As a quick overview, Oregon Tech is focused on continuing to grow enrollment, raising our profile, and gaining not just local, but national notoriety for our programs. Our amazing faculty and our talented graduates are produced within these classrooms, labs, and playing fields. We're partnering in new ways with industry through the Oregon Manufacturing Innovation Center. We're extending our expertise in sustainability through the Oregon Renewable Energy Center. The university is opening community-based research and services centers here in Klamath Falls and its population health management and applied behavior analysis programs. And at our Portland Metro campus, the Cyber Defense Center is helping train our students in the cybersecurity field 
while it offers valuable and affordable services to small and medium-sized companies. Oregon Tech is also one of the only universities in the nation where medical imaging students are working on brand new machines. Mo these new machines that most hospitals don't even have yet. This makes our graduates the most in demand and highest paid anywhere. And this is thanks to new partnership with Mindre, a top medical equipment company. The Klamath Falls campus is also changing in positive ways. The culmination of several years of effort and a final push from Dr. Nagy is now raising a brand new engineering and technology center on this campus. The Center of Excellence for Engineering and Technology will create unique innovation spaces where our students can experiment across disciplines, take risks, invent new approaches, equipment and technologies, and have safe spaces to try, fall, try again, fail some more, and ultimately succeed. They're gonna rise through this excellence and culture of entrepreneurship. When you leave today, please take a copy of our capabilities that outlines all of what I've just mentioned, in addition to some other details that I may not have touched on. A culture of inclusion and sharing of ideas has also grown over the last year. Dr. Nagy began his tenure at Oregon Tech by convening teams of faculty, staff, and students and asking them to engage together with him in blue sky thinking. What's working? What's not? What are we good at? What can we do better? He's asked these teams not to be limited by barriers of budget or having enough people or thinking that we're just too small of a university to get it done. Instead, the result of what with this effort was full campus engagement in action goals that are already being deployed, already being deployed in just this first year and making a difference in bringing Oregon Tech to the next level of excellence. This is what we mean by the Dr. Nagy factor. He's taking what this university already does so well and charging it up with his endless energy and willingness to engage all of our stakeholders in new ways and with what this new vision of what we can be. Oregon Tech is a unique polytechnic university with a history of quiet excellence and a history of being a friend and partner with industry. The Board of Trustees knew that Dr. Nagy was not going to keep this institution quiet. The quiet phase is over, my friend, so we're getting very noisy now. Yeah. At this time, it is my pleasure to tell you a little bit about Dee Thompson. She's our president of the Oregon Tech Foundation Board of Directors and who will present the foundation's gift of the chain of office in a few moments. Before President Thompson retired from private sector, although anyone who knows her friends knows she is far from what I would call retired, not inactive in any way, she was senior attorney at Intel Corporation as well as its foundation and held the same position at Mobile Oil Company prior to that. So besides leading Oregon Tech's foundation, President Thompson is also a mediator and served as mentor at Sisters High School, among other volunteer work. For those not familiar with Oregon Tech Foundation, it was established almost 50 years ago to support the educational, cultural, charitable, and service activities of the Oregon Institute of Technology. The foundation raises funds and gathers many other forms of support for the endowment, scholarships, capital projects, and much more. Committed to excellence in science, technology, and health profession education, the foundation works not simply to help Oregon Tech grow, but to grow with intention and in ways that foster a better education and experience for students and a brighter future for Oregon. It is now my pleasure to ask Foundation President Dee Thompson to please join me at the podium. Thank you, Dr. Graham. It is an honor to be here today with all of you and all of Oregon Tech's friends and together mark this important milestone in Oregon Tech's history. 
On behalf of my fellow directors, many of whom are here today, and thank you for being here to share our joy, I especially wish to welcome and thank all of Oregon Tech's donors, sponsors, boosters, and alumni who have given so much of themselves and their resources over the years to support our wonderful and unique students, our talented faculty, and the growth of this university. As Oregon Tech's new capabilities brochure says on the first page, Oregon Tech is different. That's by design and it's on purpose. This university approaches education in a model of engagement that gets students involved with their hands, their hearts, and their minds. It's a model of doing. It's a model that says, yes, try that. If it doesn't work, try again. Because it's in that moment between trying and failure that real education happens, that real inv inv invention occurs, that students become professionals and where that risk-taking eventually leads to innovation and career success that we're so well known for. As a former executive, excuse me, amongst our board members, we have decades of experience in a multitude of professions. We scrutinize our business matters closely, and we are always asking, is it authentic? Can it possibly work? Why should we do that? Is it worth it? When it comes to Oregon Tech and its new leader, Dr. Nagy, the answer to all those questions is a resounding yes. Dr. Nagy is authentic in his support for Oregon Tech. He is a leader who works very hard, who is easy to follow and to say yes to, and, to, and who is worth our support. New stakeholders are beginning to line up behind our new leader for all of those reasons. Dr. Nagy, you are generating a new sense of excitement in this great experiment in applied professional education and the polytechnic model. You have already proven that you are a leader to be reckoned with and who we can all feel comfortable in getting behind and supporting. Thank you for stepping forward and stepping up as Oregon Tech's seventh president. We're proud to have you with us. And now to the formal part of the ceremony, Dr. Naganathan, will you please join Chair Graham and me on stage? Board Chair Graham, on behalf of the Oregon Tech Foundation Board of Directors, we gift this chain of office to the Board of Trustees of the Oregon Institute of Technology to present to the Oregon U University of or <laughs> University seventh president, Nagi G. Naganathan. Thank you, Board President Thompson. Dr. Nagi G. Naganathan, I hereby present you with the university chain of office, a symbol both of the authority of the Office of President of the Oregon Institute of Technology and the faith and trust of the university's Board of Trustees in your ability to effectively serve the interests of this university and to carry out the duties and responsibilities of this office to the utmost of your abilities throughout your tenure as the president of the Oregon Institute of Technology. Friends and colleagues, thank you for joining me in that congratulations of Dr. Nagi Naganathan. Before Dr. Nagi provides his acceptance of his investiture, we would like to share the gift of this short video with you. Thank you. There's been a lot of momentum around 
redefining and re-envisioning what Oregon Tech can be, what Klamath County can be, what Klamath Falls can be. Oregon Tech is really a key uh, piece of the puzzle in terms of how are we going to be successful in Klamath County moving forward in the future. The community as a whole has really been starting to shift its vision around what does Oregon Tech need to look like to help elevate Klamath. With that, there was uh, an opportunity and a need for some new leadership. Probably most importantly was the idea that we wanted this to be a stakeholder engagement. We had an opportunity ahead of us to be able to put together the right group to really evaluate this for the good of the institution. It was time to find that leader that we thought could lead both the university and the Klamath community into the future. And we found that when we hired Dr. Nagy. I have done lots of things in my life as an academic, but truly enjoyed my time in the classroom. When I came here, I could clearly see this place is truly into students being successful. That was very appealing to me. What we saw in him was somebody that had a vision for what we felt the institution would need to see to move into the next era that we want for Oregon Tech. And Dr. Nagy really fits nicely into that and in fact is helping bolster the enthusiasm around that. In order to build, it's about partnerships. It's not just one university or one person doing something. It's really community coming together. And the president of Oregon Tech gets to be an architect in terms of economic development and prosperity in this region. And, and you know, rarely you go into a place where everybody is pretty much looking in the same direction. And that's what happened here. Probably the most important thing uh, that Dr. Nagy has done in just a short period of time is to bring together both our student body and our faculty and staff to define what they also believe our priorities should be. So we get to take advantage of that enthusiasm of what our students want to be, what they want to learn. When I look at a student at Oregon Tech, I look at them no differently than my own child who is just past the early college years. She's still in college. And as I look at her and how she has progressed through life, and I would like every one of the students coming to Oregon Tech experience the same thing. That this university can help be the linchpin, if you will, of success for this community. He believes in this university and in this community um, in the same way that many of us do. At some point in your life, both personally and professionally, things begin to resonate. You know, you begin to say, wow, you know, this is a place that truly makes a difference in the life of the students. This is a hidden gem. And I think I'm beginning to see the resonance with my students. And when you make them their idea, then great things happen. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know a lot of hard work went into putting that together. Um, at this moment, I'd like to invite Dr. Naganathan to share a few words with us. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair Graham. And thank you, friends, colleagues, and all of our guests. As I begin, I want to take a moment to thank my parents and God for all the blessings. And my brothers and sisters and their families for the love and support. Without them, this day would be unimaginable for me. Board Chair Graham and Trustees, thank you for your faith and belief in me and for granting me the extraordinary honor of leading this great university. You are Oregon Tech's inaugural Board of Trustees, and your leadership has been instrumental in bringing us to the place we are today 
as well as the strategic guidance to move towards the future. Chair Graham and Vice Chair Sliva, thank you for your guidance and mentorship over the past year. It has been extraordinary. Trustees, thank you for hosting this investiture and bringing together this wonderful community. My sincere thanks to Foundation Board Chair Dee Thompson and all members of the Foundation Board that are here today for your support of this event. I have truly enjoyed getting to know each and every one of you and your love and passion for Oregon Tech. Thank you all for what you do every day for our university. And thank you all for this special celebration today. It is a very special feeling. If I ever write a book, it would definitely be one in the series of Beating the Odds. And that is because of the many wonderful people in my life. I won't get to mention all of them by name today, but I would like to recognize some of my mentors and supporters who have traveled some great distance to be here with us today. I hope you enjoy the beauty of the journey and all that Oregon has to offer with its stunning mountains and forests. First, I would like to recognize three of the great mentors in my university life who are here. My first academic advisor in the United States and master's thesis advisor, Dr. Ken Wilmert from Clarkson University, Potsdam, New York, who is here with his wife, Carol. Uh, you know, I recall Ken and Carol coming to this poor graduate student's apartment on a very, very cold December day. It was minus 75 degrees with wind chill on Christmas that year. But it did not keep them coming to my apartment and sharing a glass of wine. Actually, I'm fibbing. It's more like a plastic, cheap plastic wear. Uh, after nearly 40 years, I still remember your warmth, your support, and your guidance. Thank you. I also want to recognize President Emeritus Dan Johnson of the University of Toledo, who is here, and Dr. Johnny Early, Dean of the UT Pharmacy School. Dr. Johnson was the president. And Dr. Early was the National Search Committee Chair when I was chosen as the Dean of Engineering at Toledo. Dan, you taught me the importance of an engaged university and the importance of building a community. And Johnny, I learned the power of quiet leadership but determined leadership from you. So thank you both for being here and making this a special occasion. Thank you. I want to thank all of my friends from the city of Toledo, Peter and Valerie Garforth, Jane Schweitzer, and my friends from the University of Toledo College of Engineering for making the journey to Klamath Falls. Steve, thank you for your very kind words. Thank you as well to Norman Nitschke, Tom and Betsy Brady, Ryan Marsha Arms, and many other special people in Ohio who wish they could be here but could not travel due to family and other graduation season commitments. You all made an extraordinary journey possible for me and my family during our 30 years in Toledo. And a celebration is never complete without recognizing your own family. I am delighted several members of my family are here. They are here from California, Georgia, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New Jersey, New York, and one all the way from India. And even some of my former graduate students are here. They were very much part of our family. Thank you all for this, making this such a special day by being here. Kasuri and I have a lot to be thankful for and to celebrate, but nothing matches how proud we are of our daughter, Sonia, a budding emergency room physician in St. Louis, Missouri, 
Sonia, we love you so much. You both always give me purpose. Kasturi and Sonia, could you please stand up and be recognized? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And switching to my Pacific Northwest colleagues, I believe this is the first time that someone has flown their own plane to come to an event I've been involved with. So Senator Betsy Johnson, thank you for piloting Boeing VIPs and other special guests to today's event. I want you to know I draw tremendous inspiration from your vision and energy. Thank you for being here. I want to thank my fellow public and private university presidents and other delegates from the university. They are here from the state of Oregon as well as Washington. I want to thank them for that extraordinary support during my first year here. And finally, it is so wonderful to gather here with my Oregon Tech family, our students, faculty, and staff. I am grateful to all of you for your welcome, support, and hard work over the last year. While it is hard for me to believe that it has already been one full year for me in Oregon, I also cannot believe that my journey in this great nation actually began almost 40 years ago. I landed as an international student in JFK Airport, of all places, in New York, in August 79. I remember carefully counting how much money I had in my wallet. I had $184, that was the total resources, and two plywood suitcases. While I am blessed to have more in my possession today than was in those two cases, I have never forgotten where I came from. As I look back across the passage of time, I can still clearly see myself as that young boy growing up in India, where my early vistas were only as far as I could see across Kumbakonam, my small hometown. Like many of you here today, higher education was one of the key influences in my life that extended my vistas well beyond the small town. And being the youngest of nine children, I must admit, has its own advantages. Of course, I have to get over the hand-me-downs first. My father, who had not gone to college, was even clearer in his desire of career choices for his children by the time it got to me. He said, if I wanted to eat, I better go to college. And if I wanted to eat well, it better be medicine or engineering. <laughs> so from my father's printing shop, which always comes back vividly to mind when I smell ink, paper, or dust, the sometimes misdirected tenacity of this Indian child moved from being distracted by the sport of cricket somehow into a boy intrigued by the world of an engineer. But the pathways were not always smooth. As a young boy, I remember floundering and failing in speech competitions early on. Apparently, it did not stop me. And then when I went from my small town to a large city for college, there were a few big city students who saw themselves as much more sophisticated than me and didn't hesitate to tell me where I belonged and where I didn't. I learned something very important in those circumstances. No one was going to define for me what I could or could not do. That may be why I can so authentically relate to the students at Oregon Tech with many of them coming from rural backgrounds and with limited economic means, as I did. That's also why that we can together take this unique public polytechnic university and our community to new heights in the coming years. And we will not let anyone tell us what we cannot do. It is what we can and will do that is the mantra of our success. Part of that is also what I try to pass on to my students as it was given to me, always help students see something in themselves that they don't even see yet. My mentors did that for me. And in many ways they were, and we are, 
like artists, artists, not the artists who work on canvas, but artists who paint pictures in the minds of our students of the possibilities and helping them bring those images to life. Because helping students build their confidence and to find their voice is just as important, if not more important, than teaching them to become content experts, which of course we do. We are very proud of how well our graduates do today with a 98% success rate and average starting salaries of $57,000 a year. But this is no time to be complacent. So as we gather today, that we recognize that this is a university building on its legacy as it is also becoming a university redefined given the ever-changing world in which we live and work. We must evolve into a new kind of polytechnic, a polytechnic for the 21st century that is a force to be reckoned with. We must build together an idea factory within this public university with an agility that is often only seen in a private setting. We must blend that Western spirit of pioneering with the new millennium's creativity and entrepreneurship, raising a world-class polytechnic university, one that is beginning to make its mark as a global leader. At the same time, we have to ensure equity in delivery of education to our diverse students. This includes working harder and with intention to build a diverse group of faculty and staff so that our students see themselves in their mentors and role models and find their spot at Oregon Tech. As a polytechnic for the 21st century, we will defy the caste system in post-secondary technical education. We will create a new kind of workforce by creating a seamless pathway for our students in Oregon from career technical education to associate to baccalaureate to graduate degrees through mutually beneficial and trusting private and public partnerships. We will equip our students with the tools to be successful in their own frequencies while resonating with the goals of our industry partners. We want every one of our graduates to walk with a quiet swagger. A swagger of confidence, not arrogance. And this demands that Oregon Tech is prepared to be different now, not in five years or 10 years, now. And to do differently, we must think differently. And thinking differently includes working differently and working better in defining new ways of partnering with industry, academia, and government. So how do we achieve that? I know that most of you would agree that the cultural divide between universities and industries can slow, if not stall, the progress and outcomes of collaboration. But we see that as an exciting challenge at Oregon Tech, not a stop sign. This is a journey with industry that is fueled by passion and innovation. And this partnership cannot and should not be driven just by goodwill and generosity. I believe strongly that academia and industry can only succeed when there is mutual resonance in our goals. And as a university with decades of success in using renewable energy to heat and electrify our progress, we will never run out of our renewable source of the polytechnic fuel that feeds this type of private public partnership. Oregon Tech is proud today to prepare students for professional practice. My colleagues have heard me say many times over the last year that Oregon Tech is striving to achieve its full potential as industry's university. For some of you, this may be new and you may ask, what does it mean? To start with, we are industry's university because we are preparing career ready professionals, not just with top notch, strong and flexible career skill sets, but graduates who are confident risk takers and savvy innovators. Not just comfortable with today's technology, but fully prepared to remain at the top of their game throughout their career. Oregon Tech will increasingly be the destination of choice for distinctive professionals. Professionals who are not just experts in their disciplines, but holistic professionals who are fully prepared to be leaders of tomorrow. 
and we are Industries University because we are committed to creating an innovations ecosystem that is a surrogate lab for industries. When companies think of innovation, we want to have the type of footprint that makes them naturally walk towards Oregon Tech. And we are Industries University because we don't want to wait for the industry to search and find us. We will extend our graduate and professional degrees into industries and educate on site, making it easy for them to provide continuing education to their employees. We do this now for Boeing and employees in Seattle. And it is a model we have been successful at in about, for about 20 years now. So this is something we must intentionally build on. And just to cite one more very important attribute, we are Industries University because we are fully prepared to take a new and innovative approach to intellectual property exchange, not one driven by protectionism and dreaming the next Gatorade or Google within the university walls. We want to make it easy for industry to launch new technologies with agility while we continue to innovate outside in with our partners. These are just a few attributes. And I feel confident in talking about these new directions because of who we have in our faculty ranks. Our faculty truly believe in preparing students for practice. And we are very fortunate to have many in our faculty ranks who are not only great educators, but also have diverse industry experience. The success rates of our graduates in the workforce today and the levels they rise to financially and in the roles they earn demonstrate the power of a faculty who have depth in both worlds. Who better to immerse our students in the realities and requirements of professional practice, which includes teamwork cross-discipline collaboration, cultural competence, risk-taking, and problem-solving. This is an ethos that Oregon Tech must continue to nurture because it is also the currency upon which our students earn their professional success. And to nurture such ethos, as we look inward at Oregon Tech, on the way we operate, we must always ask why. If you are doing something because it has been done this way for as long as anyone can remember, it is probably time to take a look at it again. Just as an example, if we want to fully achieve our vision of being Industries University, we must create a different channel, which is even more seamless and effortless for our faculty to be in industry. They should not have to wait seven years for a sabbatical leave to do this. What about creating a new mode where faculty members are expected to be engaged with practice and industry virtually every week or at least every month? What about every one of our academic departments making a commitment to host one or more industry professionals at Oregon Tech at any given time as executives and residents? Now, doing things differently also applies to how we work with the community we reside in. As Oregon Tech trustee Kelly Morris said in the video, Oregon Tech's place in and connection to the Klamath Falls community are indeed significant ones. This is our birthplace. This is our genesis. It is where the idea of a strong public polytechnic model was born in the state of Oregon, and from which we became what we are today. We are not just a collection of buildings on the hill. We are a community that is a subset of the Klamath Falls community overall. We do have another thriving campus in Portland Metro and other successful delivery sites. It is not yet the case that we represent such a large presence in those communities as we do here. Yes, our economic footprint in Klamath County can be measured financially, with Oregon Tech generating more than $75 million a year economic activity. But even more important is the impact of our students and faculty in the community we reside in. I am proud of what they do today in Klamath Falls, and one of my goals during this presidency is to find more ways to intentionally demonstrate that Oregon Tech as an engaged university is here for Klamath Falls. 
as our city manager, Nathan Cherpesky, would like to say, Klamath Falls cannot be just a town with a university. Klamath Falls has to become the university town. Over the past year, as a member of this university town, I have also had the pleasure of being in the virtuous shadow of a number of people in this community who have contributed so very much to Oregon Tech. They believe in her potential and they are helping to forge a future with purpose and philanthropy. I want to start by thanking our foundation president, Dee Thompson, and her husband, Tom, for their passion and love for Oregon Tech and their generous leadership gift to kick off our advancement initiatives this year. I always like to say to Dee that she is a force of nature as she leaves no stone unturned in pronouncing the tremendous value of Oregon Tech education in every avenue possible. So Dee and Tom, we thank you for your extraordinary friendship and support. <laughs> Next, I want to thank John Stilwell and recognize the memory of his beloved wife, Lois. The Stillwells are a couple I met early on. As a matter of fact, Lois interviewed me when I came to the campus as part of the search process. I came to learn very quickly that the Stillwells didn't believe in being still when it came to making a difference in the lives of Oregon Tech students. Sadly, we lost Lois last year, but her legacy lives on. The Stillwells, through their considerable scholarship support, are helping Oregon Tech increase our ability to expand access to students who come to higher education through athletics, which represents an important segment of the student body. My friends, I am very pleased to share with all of you today that we will be breaking ground next month for the John and Lois Stillwell Stadium at Oregon Tech. John, could you please stand and be recognized? We could not have envisioned this million dollar project, but for the Stillwell's generous contribution. Thank you, John, for your generosity and for building a new legacy of success for our scholar athletes at Oregon Tech and for always helping us to remember the love and generosity of our beloved Lois. Thank you. Finally, I must recognize Mrs. Nancy Wendt and her late husband, Mr. Dick Wendt, who have not only created doors and windows through Jeldwin, they have opened doors and windows of opportunity for Oregon Tech and our students. With their continued generosity, they have continued to make tremendous difference for our students. Mrs. Wendt, I know that you and your family don't like to put yourselves in the spotlight and always give without needing acknowledgement, but I cannot let today pass without my sincerest thank you. So. <laughs> now I have to tell you, that's only phase one of the applause. So Mrs. Went. Mark, Karen, Rod, and Carol, may I request that you please rise and remain standing for a very brief moment and look at our audience if you can. My friends, once again, the Wendt family is making sure the legacy of Mr. Wendt lives on. It is with great delight that I announce today that they are dedicating a transformative investment of $2 million for Oregon Tech's new engineering complex in Klamath Falls. Please join me in a loud round of applause for their wonderful investment. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Thanks to this generous commitment from the Wen family and the passionate fundraising efforts of the members of Oregon Tech Foundation, we are now able to expand our campaign plans for the new innovative programs, equipment, and technology for our students. There are many in this audience today that continue to help Oregon Tech in so many ways. Please know that your investments through time, talent, and treasure are allowing Oregon Tech to think big and bold. As we look into the future, I am pleased to share that we are embarking on a foundational campaign of at least $4 million this year to seed the future of Oregon Tech. As of today, over $3 million have been committed towards our goal during just the last few months. Soon we will be sharing more about the campaign and the exciting areas of investment. And of course, I would be failing in my role as president if I do not mention that we will have plenty of new walls, rooms, and open spaces where we will be very proud to display your name and celebrate your generosity. <laughs> I hope many of you, even better, each of you can participate at any level you can and help to make this vision a reality. As I conclude, I would like to briefly reminisce where this all started for me at Oregon Tech. Even when I interviewed for the presidency in October 16, I clearly saw glimpses of this generosity, friendship, and partnership. I could not help but resonate with this value strongly, and I had this overwhelming feeling that said, this is me. This is where I can contribute something meaningful and make a difference, and what a wonderful experience it has been over the last year to learn and help to lead the charge. I've been so fortunate to be welcomed into the larger Oregon Tech community that shares my core values of mutual respect and trust. We are all different and unique people from different backgrounds, experiences, cultures, and politics perhaps. But when we all offer respect and trust to one another and believe in our shared vision for Oregon Tech and our communities across the state and elsewhere, we can achieve our goals. Oregon Tech is 70 years young this year, soon to be 71, and we have our sights set on our 75th anniversary celebration in 2022. We welcome all of you to travel with us on this journey, which I know will be an amazing ride. Together, as we reach higher, and make our voices louder and prouder about what Oregon Tech is and can be, we unite in purpose. And let's do more than just move the needle on the dial gauge of success. Let's crack open the case that the needle is in, take it apart, digitize it, run it on solar power, and rebuild it for today's needs and the future's vast potential. Thank you again for coming to Oregon Tech today and recognizing a milestone in our history. Your presence means so much to me and my family, and to share it with all of you touches us deeply. Thank you so much, and go Owls. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Nagy, for those inspirational remarks. I know that Oregon Tech's faculty, staff, and students join me in being excited about the opportunities and possibilities for this university as we move forward in unison and under your leadership and shared vision and mission. It is now my pleasure to introduce Steve Sliwa, found the founder and CEO of SEEK and the vice chair of the Oregon Tech Board of Trustees. Dr. Sliwa has also served on Oregon Tech's board since its inception in 2014, applying his background in aerospace, higher education, technology, and entrepreneurship to helping take Oregon Tech to the next level of achievement. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sliwa to share a vote of thanks on behalf of the Board of Trustees. 
Thank you, Dr. Nagy, and congratulations again from your Board of Trustees. As you just heard, Dr. Nagy has generated considerable excitement with all of Oregon Tech stakeholders. As a member of the university's trustees, I can tell you that we are energized by Dr. Nagy's vision and his bias toward action. As we come to the end of today's ceremony, I want to extend another thank you to all of you for joining us here at Oregon Tech. We are a university on the move, and we encourage all of you to stay in touch with Oregon Tech. As Dr. Nagy emphasized in his speech, we want to hear from you, to partner with you, to collaborate with you in ways that ensure strong higher education institutions in Oregon and in the nation. We want to find new innovative approaches to nurture, support, and educate our students. Our shared goal is to ensure an agile workforce that not only meets the challenges of today, but is flexible enough to shift and change as our economies, our societies, and our industries' needs change over time. Oregon Tech's recognition is growing rapidly, and for good reason. To iterate what our board chair Graham said earlier today, it's time to get noisy at Oregon Tech. We know that Dr. Nagy will be leading the charge with his energy and his vibrant plans to extend the vision and mission of this great institution. Your presence and participation today means a great deal to Oregon Tech and to the trustees of this great institution. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Sliwa. And thank you again to everyone here today who have come from far and near to share this wonderful day with us, the investiture of our seventh president, Dr. Nagi Naganathan. We want to stay connected with you. So if you're not on Oregon Tech's mailing list, please leave a card or your email address on the table on your way out. Please also take our new overview booklet on your way out as well. We welcome you to join us now in the College Union, the building just next door on the second floor in the Crater Lake Complex for a reception in honor of Dr. Nagy. With the exception of the recessional, the events of the investiture ceremony for Dr. Nagi Naganathan are now concluded. Please stand now and allow the recessional to exit prior to leaving the gymnasium. Thank you all for gathering here today to celebrate this special occasion and enjoy the rest of today's festivities.